We may not look like we're going to the same spot. Oh boy, this is popping open. But really, we could be. Hello everybody, welcome out to the Dice Tower. My name is Chris Yee. And I'm Wendy Yee. And today we're taking a look here at Free Ride USA. That's right, so this is a Freedom and Freeze game. It's by his company 2F. And in this game you're going to be building routes up on the board and then you're going to be picking up and delivering. So this is a follow-up to the previous Free Ride. Obviously this is a, what the copy we picked up at S and it says Free Fart. Um, but, um, no farts are free. Right. Oh boy, this is popping open. So we're going to sit this uh, this sucker down here. So there's a follow-up to the previously, this was from two years ago, was the original free mm -hmm. ride. Uh, and this is the one that is now in the U.S. and has color. Yes, that makes a huge difference. That's something that we really enjoyed the original game. Uh, but that was one of our biggest complaints. That it was so hard to find stuff on the maps because nothing was color-coded, nothing was set in regions. And so... Um, yeah, let's excited to talk about this. Yeah, so let's go ahead and have Wendy show you how it plays, then we'll give you our thoughts on this edition. This is a brief overview of Free Ride. So in Free Ride, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be picking up and delivering through this network of routes that you're creating on the board. And you're going to be doing that based on these cards over here. So the goal of the game is to collect as many cards as you can, as well as you get more points for the first time that you collect Unique City. Um, so the more diversity that you have is going to be better. There's also these little coins that you can collect um, from sharing routes that other people have, and then also uh, from making these coast-to-coast uh, -coast connections, like from all the way from Savannah to Salt Lake City um, over here. All right, I wanna start off by talking about the main actions of the game, and we have that over here shown on our little board. So the main actions are to be able to place out two rails or to be able to move your train up to two spaces. Now there are placement rules for the rails, but basically if it's connected to anywhere that your train can get to, you can lay down those rails. And then movement is just two adjacent cities. So this would be one movement, this would be two movements. Now you can use other people's rails, you just have to pay them a dollar to use them, and then they actually would become uh, permanent free routes for anybody else in the game. Finally, if you get down to one or zero rails being available, um, on your placement turn, you can actually spend a dollar to get five more rails, or you can just choose to not take a placement turn or a move turn and instead take a gain rails turn where you'll gain five rails for free. So those are the three main actions and that's literally it. Those are the three possibilities. So let's go ahead and talk about the meat of the game and that's these route cards over here. Um, so this is one of the easiest connections over here would be St. Louis to Knoxville. So let's talk about this. So each one of these columns is a separate set of routes and each one of these routes is split into two routes. So for example, if we look at this, you could pick up in St. Louis and deliver to Knoxville or you could choose to pick up in Knoxville and deliver to New York. You can never do all three of these because as soon as you pick up in a space, you're going to actually collect those cards and then you're going to remove the third card and that will just get um, set in the discard pile. So let's pretend over here that I have all these nice connections that I need um, to build up this over here. So if I move to St. Louis on my move action, that would be my first movement, I would say, hey, I want to pick up these cards, the Knoxville, Oh, I'm sorry, I picked up the wrong cards. Um, let's say I wanna pick up St. Louis to Knoxville. So I would take those and I would place them on my board here with the, the delivery location on top. Um, I can only ever have one of these during this first age of the game. I then for my second movement would move over here and I would deliver to Knoxville. These then would both go in my supply and for the rest of the game, I will know I have two of these cities claimed. After that, this will be refilled with new age one cities and these will come out bottom to top and then we will continue on and it will be the next player's turn. So the game works that we're gonna work our way all the way through age one and then during age two, we are actually going to unlock a second spot to hold routes. And then in age three, we're going to unlock um, and flip over this board and then we can move three spaces instead of two spaces on a turn. Once we get to the third round, this is the time where anybody can choose to stop playing at any time and that's gonna be how the game ends. We could run all the way out of age three cards and the game won't end until people say, I am done. So what that means is that if a player chooses to end early, they can actually gain one coin for every single round 
that they don't play in. So basically after they finish, they'll earn coins for every round. Um, they also don't have to complete all of their objectives. So if I have these sitting here, I don't have to complete them. Um, obviously I'm missing out on those points, but if I think I'm gonna earn more points by collecting coins every round, I can just stop. Once players have decided that they are done with everything and they finished all their turns, uh, players are going to be counting up all the city cards that they have. Now the first version of a card that someone has is worth five points and then every subsequent copy after that is going to be worth only two and then every coin that they have is worth three points. Once you've counted up all the points then the player with the most wins. So production wise, I think that if you come into this brand new, look at this, you might say, oh, it doesn't look terribly pretty. It looks like a Freedom and Freeze 2 F spiel game, right? Yeah. For me, for us though, this is a gigantic improvement over the original. I'm going to flash up some pictures of the original board and everything so people can see w that this game looks unbelievable if you were to not have some sort of regional color coding between the cards and the map. And right. that's what the first edition was. Yeah, in fact, with the first edition, we went in with Sharpies and we colored the cards and the associated cities just so that we could more easily play it because we wanted to play it and we wanted it in the library here at the Dice Tower. Um, I think this is, I mean, I can just say this one is probably just going to straight up replace the, the other one. My hand Sharpied edition? Yes, this should replace know. it. Um, if you have not played this one before, this is primarily who we're speaking to, right? Because if you've played the original, you know, oh, this is a very good train game, very mm -hmm. clean very easy systems and everything. Quick actions. Very very incredibly quick turns. So if you haven't played this before, uh, what I really enjoy about this is that amount of flexibility in the pick up and deliver, where there's the six routes on the side and you have to pick uh, A to B or B to C. Mm -hmm. And I think that that system works very cleanly. Uh, what it means is that you have basically 12 options at a time. And you, once you pick something up, you're committed to it. You can't clear it off of your board until you deliver that person. But so there's like that joyful tension of like, do I take the, do I take that thing now? I bet it'll be easy versus something else new comes out. Like, oh, I want that one instead. So yeah, I don't know. I'd love, I just love that tension of the pick up and deliver. I think it's fascinating too, because um, that middle city, that, that B city could be, you know, in the middle of the board. And you might be headed that direction, and then I might be headed to the A city. And so we may not look like we're going to the same spot to pick up the same route, but really we could be. And so there is that interesting interaction of you're trying to, you're trying to race in the sense of if we're going for the same stuff or like the same three routes, um, sometimes someone could come in there and kind of steal it from you. But at the same time, I might also be waiting for you to start something so that the board refills so that I can find something better that's shorter that fits in the region of the map that I'm already in. Because what if everything is on the opposite side of the map? You know, maybe I'm playing a little bit of chicken, building up some random routes here or there, just waiting for you to clear it out so that I can swoop in and take something that hopefully comes out better. I think that's a better way of explaining, yeah, what I was trying to trying to say. Yeah, I love that your point of uh, that B city could be the start of something or the end point, the terminating a terminating point. So yeah, the same route can be juicy to two different players on different parts of the map for different reasons. Uh, and I and I like that tension. Or and what you talk about with a chicken kind of waiting. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's you know you can just keep building train routes if you want. You're like, well, I'm just gonna claim some routes because of that devilish little bit of player interaction mm -hmm. where I see that you probably want to go here. I'm gonna build a direct route so that you can either move awkwardly through multiple cities around it. Or you could pay me that coin, pay me three points at mm -hmm. the end of the game to use my route. But I also love that once you pay to use someone's route, that control marker comes off and it's just an open public route at that point. I think that's really cool, especially because if someone's made a route up into a corner of the country and you're like, okay, I went up there and I paid all this money to get up there to make that delivery, you don't have to pay to come back. And I know yeah. it makes it free for everyone else, um, but I think it creates a fascinating way of positive interaction where I build out routes, you give me money for my routes. But it's also not this over really burdened system where I had money to get there, but I don't have money to get back. So right. I think that's clever. I'm um, guessing that's why the game is called Free Ride. Oh, because eventually you're making it free? Because eventually the more you pay each other, 
And like, and it's a, and it's kind of a closed economy. I pay you later on. You pay me to right. use my. I pay this to John. You know what I mean? And John will pay you. So in this, in some ways, it's semi of closed economy. You might kind of even out, but you might strategically build a bunch of spots and then be this money mm-hmm. mogul. We're like, I have all the pennies now, and I feel great about it. <laughs> and nobody can use any of the tracks. Right. Don't do that. That sounds mean. Um. Yeah, I think overall this game is just a big step up from the last edition, um, and that was one that I we still, even though it was nigh, nigh unplayable, we still gave the last a seven both. Um, and so for me, I'm going to come in at an eight with this. I think this is so much better, um, and I really enjoy how clean and simple those actions are. Do I want to lay out two routes, or do I want to move two spaces? And... Um, you know, and then pick up and deliver, obviously. But I just think that that's so clever and so clean. I also like that you can't just grab the the extra little train tokens, mm. not train or whatever the the, the rail railroad. tokens. Thank you. You can't just hoard those and grab a bunch. Like you have to have one or zero before you can grab more. And so I think that adds a nice level of tension to you can't constantly be playing chicken or pay a penny to get more. And you're like, oof. Giving up three points just to try to build out right now, that better be really important. It'd be super but worth there. it, right? Yeah. yeah. So I just, I think that this game has some fascinating stuff going on for how simple and clean it is. I think that this is one of my favorite train games to come out in quite a while. Yeah. Uh, I'm giving this one at 8.5. Sweet. I would have given the original 8.5 as well, if not for the big blunder of the just the whole map being sepia tone and not being able to see things easily. Um, even with this, I think that the color coding is fantastic, right? Some people are going to prefer to put little markers out there to indicate stuff. You can see people's little hacks and fixes out there on the internet. I think that the color coding works perfectly well for me. If I see that there's a route that goes red to yellow to pink, I know I have a good shorthand of what that means, even if I don't know the exact cities. I'm willing to look in the yellow region and see, okay, which one is that? Is that Savannah right there? Okay, good, right? I might be a little bit biased. These are American U.S. cities, and so I, I think that makes a huge difference. I for also me. have a little bit quicker recall. Mm. I know whereabouts on that savanna is going to be, right? But I think that even if you don't, the color coding makes a huge difference. Makes it so playable because there's six there's six lined up routes at the time, each with two options. So there's a lot to parse all at once. But the the color code makes a huge difference. I also like the little details of, like, the illustrations, the different buildings that they're featuring on each city. I say buildings. One of them, El Paso, has just the Rio Grande. It's a river. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Barstow is in the the map of this game. Why they picked Barstow over Las Vegas, I will never know. Look. I didn't, I don't I wasn't alive in the 50s, maybe it was a thing. Barstow boom in the 50s. I don't yeah. know. It it just it cracks me up a little bit. Uh Orlando is like a skew in Florida. It's like beachside. And it's, there's those little funny things here and there, but I appreciate that there's good work put into the production mm-hmm. of this and a huge step up. So, got to poke a little fun. There you go. Um I actually wanted to comment on the little pieces and the markers that people use. I still feel like that is something that I need. So I started putting out colored mini poker chips um, and that helped a little bit, but really having something in six different colors that is a one, a two or three or an ABC, um, I think that is that to me might step it up to an 8.5. Mm. I still feel like looking at 18 cards at once is a lot. And so I really need that visual shorthand. Um, that's why, for me, I think it's an 8 and not an 8.5. Okay. Yeah. No, for me, this is my, one of my favorite train games I've played in a long time. I think Freedom and Freeze did a great job with it. Mm-hmm. And I love this particular edition of it so much. So that's getting a seal of excellence from us here at the Dice Tower. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Wendy Yee. And I'm Chris Yee. Go ride those trains! Choo-choo. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another video from the Dice Tower. Hey, you wanna learn more about us? Communicate with us. We have a Facebook group, we have a Discord channel. Lots of different ways to get involved with the Dice Tower. You can find that in our Linktree link below. So just click that, it will take you, and you can communicate with us on Facebook, join our Facebook groups. There's lots of cool things that you can find and become part of the Dice Tower. Thanks so much for watching, I'm Tom Bassett.